My name is David Koenig, I'm a general practitioner in Exeter and we're at the Royal College of General Practitioners and I'm in conversation with Peter Goadsby. Peter, I'd like to look for this section about the history and examination. The history is the key part of the um, headache consultation. And I guess the history that you take in tertiary care will be a little bit different from my clinic and will be a little bit different from the GP that only has 10 minutes. I think one of the luxuries that we have is we have, well, I have 40, 45 minutes and how long you have. And I think you actually need that for a headache consultation. And universally patients say, well, no one's ever sat down and listened to me like that before. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to do in a short space of time. I just wonder if you could sort of pull out how your uh, history might differ from mine and, and perhaps some tips how a GP could cope in 10 minutes. What are the sort of key things that you're looking for in your history? Well, I think that the thing I'm looking, I mean, I'm looking to f flesh it out in great detail because I, I want to be able to get the full picture. Um, as you say, because very often, uh, because we have the time uh, and, the, and, the, and the diagnosis is in the history. I want to get out pretty quickly how long the problem's been there and how frequent the headache is. Because how long it's been there will tell you how excited you have to be in the process. If someone's got a headache that's only been present for a week, all bets are off. We have to be, because mm. it's new onset headache. If someone's had a headache that's, that's on and off been a bother to them for 15 years, you, you know, you, you, you've got a bit of time to think People about it. And the frequency is crucial. Um, are you getting, that'll tell you about disability, it's going to tell you about where you're going in treatment, it gives you a sort of range of where you're thinking. So a person who's got a headache every day um, is a different, uh, has got a different problem to a person who has a headache once a month. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to get the big picture uh, of it, that's, that's where I want to start. Where do you need to start? Well, I think I'd like to start, well, certainly I'd like a bit of background. I, I like family history of headache, because if, there, if there's a family history of troublesome headache, which is going to be migraine, you can bet your bottom dollar there's a bit of a sniff of migraine going around somewhere. In my clinic, because the bulk of what we see is, in fact, migraine. Yes. Um, I think an interesting starting point is also for us in our context is ask the patient what they hope to get out of the consultation, because right. they come for all sorts of reasons. I mean, they come to you because you're probably the last, you know, they've been around the circuit and they want, uh, they want a diagnosis, but there's all sorts of reasons that they come to see us in our clinic. Some people are worried about a tumour. Some people are happy with the, the medication they're on, but they're worried about long-term effects of the medication. Other people just want to talk about their problem. Mm. So in a way, it's nice to pick up what they're actually here for. Um, but my, my first opening question in our intermediate care clinic uh, is how many types of headache do you get? And I think invariably patients get more than one type of headache. And this confuses GPs. It's usually all part of the same migraine phenotype. But they say, well, I get headache at the back end. It's, you know, and, and they usually have two or three headaches. And I like to sort of tease out those and then probably deal with the, um, the one that bothers them the most. And I think that it, it, that's where GPs do come unstuck a lot because patients present with this sort of murky picture, which you can then dissect down. Um, I'd agree with I think that's exactly right. So I, I think if you're busy um, as a GP, if you find out how many days are affected, and then focus on the headache they're bothered by the most. Get them to tell you about the worst headache they have, because it's probably driving the biology. Yeah. So instead of getting to describe, I've got 17 types of headaches, I'll go through that. It's polite, I think, to stop people and say, tell me about your worst headache. Let's talk about your worst headache. Get that right, because it's probably going to be driving the diagnosis. I think the other thing is the impact of the headache. I mean, a simple yes. rule of thumb, I say to GPs, well, tension up headache, you keep going, migraine, you have to lie down, and cluster headache, you bang your head against the wall. And I think yes. that, you know, yes. that's, just, that's very simple, but in fact, yes. you won't go far wrong if you stick. No, no. So I think my second thing is probably impact. So those, those are my intermediate care do. clinic would be the, the two things. And then I always like to discuss, do they think there's anything serious going on here? Because sometimes that hasn't been put on the table. They usually haven't had a scan. I think that's important to put that on the table. But I think the focus of perhaps our attention is how can we help GPs to cope with a headache in 10 minutes. I, mean, I think I often say to GPs that by default, if someone sits in front of you with a headache, it's going to be a migraine because 75% of, of headaches in primary care are migraines. So it's not a bad place to start for someone under 50. Or more 50. than 75%. Isn't it? Well, probably more than 75%. Yeah. If you're over 50, then I think perhaps the default diagnosis should be temporal arthritis if you want to sort of Mm -hmm. Look at it like that, but I think it'll you know, start thinking of migraine and, and obviously exclude red flags and, and, and go from probably a diagnosis of migraine. And again, the the important things I want to know is why are they actually coming now? You know, why, why do they left it all? So what's actually yep. triggered this presentation? Um, and again, the GP can say, well, how many types of headache? As we said earlier, how many types of headache do you get? Let's deal with the main one. Just go for that one. Then I think as a minimum, they should do blood pressure and fundoscopy. And then ask the patient to go away with a diary. And I think the diary is a really good mm. uh, way of, of mm. just playing for a bit more time and also actually seeing, 
seeing what's happening. And I think that's going to take you. To, that's going to take you a good ten minutes. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I agree with everything you said, and particularly I echo the f physical examination. We have the luxury, and in neurology, of course, um, it's part of the part of the package, so to speak, to get the neurological examination, and I will I will do that. But I, I think if I only had one instrument as a neurologist, I'd want my ophthalmoscope. Mm. That would be the one instrument I'd want to have. Um, and, and the other general physical thing, as you say, is about is, is blood pressure. That's a, that's that's very helpful. And I completely agree with you about the diary. Um, that's it, it, you can get a lot of information from the diary. Things like the frequency, what medicate, you know, how often they're using medications. Is there a menstrual relationship? Is there some other pattern to what's going on that will that they didn't quite get? But when they write it down, it's surprising how the mm. pattern just sort of leaps out of the page. I mean, the other useful thing that can be used is these impact. There are a few impact tests mm -hmm. around now, which you can download off the web. Uh, yes. Headache impact test, migraine impact disability assessment score. There is evidence to suggest that if the GP gets hold of what the impact is, the treatments can be a lot better. So they can perhaps get sent away with a, with an impact uh, mm -hmm. assessment as well as a, yes. as a diary, which I think could be helpful for yeah. the next time, the next bite of the cherry. Um, I wonder about blood tests. I mean, a lot of, GP, you know, a lot of GPs refer patients to us and they would have had their bloods done. And I think certainly bloods, the patient likes to see that something is happening. Mm. It gives the GP a bit more time to play with. Mm. What's it going to turn up? Well, hopefully um, nothing. That's always better. It's always well to be healthy. I guess that we, we talked about in the, one of the previous videos, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the looking for the markers for giant cell arteritis. But in the main, um, the blood tests are, uh, um, getting blood tests into in most people with who are presenting with headache is not going to help you at all. No. Um, blood tests are really better done looking for a particular thing. Now, do I think this person, are they really tired? Did it look like they're getting a little bit overweight? Is, oh, should I be doing thyroid function tests? Do they look a bit pale? Should I be getting their hemoglobin done? Um, am I, they look a bit puffy? Should I get their renal function done? I mean, what am I... What am I actually testing for? Mm. Because just doing a bland panel of, uh, of things is not going to lead, uh, is almost certainly not going to lead very far. So the patient has their first 10 minutes, they go away with a diary, they come back, they're still in trouble. Then I think you probably need to up the level of um, investigation, up the level of examination, and I'll, perhaps I could just go through my very quick pro forma. Because I think with headache, you're not looking for subtle neurological nuances certainly in GP land, you're no. looking for sort of fairly straightforward yep. and everyone has come unstuck medically legally by not examining the patient, yes. not missing a subtle me uh, neurological nuance. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just tend to get my ophthalmoscope out, look at the pupillary reflexes, look at their fundi, eye movements, visual fields, simple confrontation visual mm -hmm. fields, grimacing, blowing your lips out, blowing your cheeks out, uh, protruding your tongue, corneal reflexes, then I move down to the neck. I'm really interested in the neck, particularly occipital uh, groove tenderness. We'll yes. talk about that when we talk about migraine. Yes. Trigger points are quite useful to look at. Um, I then do uh, palmer drift, uh, fine movement of uh, fingers, dexterity, close eye, finger nose pointing, then reflexes, plantar reflexes, rhombus test, uh, heel toe, and if they haven't had the blood pressure done by their GP recently, blood pressure. Now that examination doesn't take very long to do, and I, my hope is that if there's anything fairly major, that's going to be picked up. I think that's very, very, th very thorough. What you describe is quite appropriate. Is that what sort of what sort of examination would you would you give the patient in addition to that sort of? Would you? I obsess level? a little bit about eye movements because um, eye movements are a very good mar window into motor function. So, uh, as, as well as looking at pursuit movements, I tend, uh, I, I tend to get them to make saccades to a target and saccades to an instruction. Uh, I, I, so I'm obsessing around eye movements a little bit, but, uh, but I wouldn't, and I wouldn't add much, I wouldn't add anything to, uh, other to the cranial nerves. I tend to test power um, routinely, um, and that's just uh, at the shoulders and at the elbows and uh, at, the, at the fingers and then at the, uh, hip flexors and knee and the and the ankle. As you say, I do the reflexes be, and uh, do the um, and do gait and as you as you're describing it um, with the planters, of course. I don't tend to do a sensory examination, um, although I t although I do tend to do sensory examination of the face. So I look at the trigeminal um, nerve. That's partly to do with again with my referral mix. So I see some 
a reasonable number of patients with these neuropathic trigeminal pains, and I'm looking for where there's been a nerve injury and evidence of that with uh, with reduced sense pin, sensation to pinprick or, um, or or hyperalgesia or allodynia as a marker of trigeminal nerve injury. Um, right. So I find it, that sensory examination useful in in that context in in the head.